What's up guys, welcome to Built. Today I'm gonna to show you how I made my very own one-off wide body over fenders for my MR2 right here in my garage. Check it out. All right, so I spent the past like four months trying to figure out how to make my own wide body over fenders. I have an MR2 Turbo, I love it, it's an awesome car. There's not a lot of like new aftermarket support. There was a lot of support in the 90s, there's a little bit now, but really not that much. And I really wanted to do some bolts on over fenders, kind of Rocket Bunny style. Uh, but I couldn't find any that looked really good. Maybe Flug made some back in the day and they're okay, but they're just not what I was looking for. So I finally just decided to bite the bullet and try to build my own. Now before this project, I had never done this before. I didn't have any kind of experience building fenders. I didn't know how it was gonna go. I just thought it would be a fun thing to try. It ended up working out really well. So I did the rear fenders and I broke it down into like a step-by-step -step process. There's a whole playlist of videos that you can watch if you're more interested in that. Uh, but this is gonna be an overview of the whole process. So today I'm gonna take you from having no wide body fender to a completely painted, finished product. I'm gonna show you how I did it step-by-step. -step. Uh, heads up, it requires a lot of sanding. Check it out. So I started with the Rocket Bunny version 1 S13 kit, mainly because the two cars, the MR2 and the S13, share a lot of the same lines, specifically up front. The MR2 has a really narrow nose, and I needed a car that had a narrow nose as well, or at least I thought I did, to make these fenders fit. And then I just used tape to kind of hold them in place, and once I was satisfied with where they were, and once both sides matched, I used some self-tapping screws to screw them in and mount them. You're going to see me grab blue tape a lot in this. I like using blue tape to mark lines. I like using it to hold parts in place. And I used it throughout this entire build uh, to make sure that everything was lining up and matching perfectly. Once the fenders were kind of where I wanted them, I pulled them back off the car and I placed them together so I could make sure that the lines were exactly the same on both sides. I had to tr do a little bit of trimming, but they were pretty close because I had measured so many times. So after that, I grabbed some green floral foam. Now you can get this at any kind of hobby store. Basically, it's a foam. I guess it's used for making floral arrangements. I don't really know, but it's great for sculpting. It sculpts super easy. So I glue this foam on with hot glue and let it set up, and then I use a hacksaw to cut pieces away until I kind of get the shape that I'm looking for. Now, the cool thing about this is I really didn't know what I was looking for. I just knew kind of, I kind of had an idea of what I wanted to look like. So I just kept cutting and cutting until I ended up with something kind of close. After that, I took some sandpaper and shaped the pieces down a little bit more. You'll see me grab a paint can and wrap it in sandpaper and basically all I'm doing there is trying to transfer a curve into that foam. So the foam when I cut it originally was straight and when you sand it with a curved surface it puts that curve, whatever the curved surface is, into the foam. So I use this can a lot in this build uh, to make that curve look the way I want it to. After I had the shape that I wanted with the fenders, I covered them with tape. Now this is different than what I did with the rear fenders, and here's why. The rear fenders still have foam that's stuck in them that I can't get out. So I thought that if I covered the foam with tape, the foam would easily pull out after I had the part made, and I'd be able to reinforce it from the back. After all the tape was on and cut, I sanded the edge of the fender so that the fiberglass would have something to stick to, and I started putting on my resin. Now I worked a lot slower this day than I normally do. It was also kind of cold outside. Fiberglass resin uh, requires heat in order to set and it creates its own heat, but the hotter it is outside, the faster it'll set up. So what I did this time, it's a little bit different than last time, is I put one layer of resin on, let it get tacky, and then put on the layer of fiberglass. And then I pushed it in to the resin. Then I would go and mix more resin up, put that layer of resin on the fiberglass, let it get tacky, put another layer of fiberglass on. Then I would mix more resin up, put that resin on the fiberglass, let it get tacky, and I would put another layer of fiberglass on. So it totaled three layers of fiberglass, and the reason I had to wait longer, the reason I chose to wait longer, was so that the resin would hold the fiberglass to the cloth. If you remember in my first fender video, I actually glued the cloth together and just hoped the resin would seep through it, and it didn't. And so this was a lot more effective. I have a very solid piece now because I chose to do it this way. And I really think that moving slower and allowing each layer to get a little bit tacky will provide a much cleaner piece in the end. So after I put the fiberglass on, I really wanted these things to be strong. That joint is a weak section where the new fiberglass and old fiberglass meet. 
And so I just covered everything with fiberglass filler. Now you'll see me use this stuff a lot too. I really, really love it. It's like Bondo, but way, way harder and way uh, better for making structural pieces. And so basically there are some waves and lumps and things like that in the fiberglass. And I just decided to use two layers of this stuff to just fill all of that in. So once I was done filling it, I let it cure overnight. And then I came back and started to pull the fenders off because I definitely did not want to sand them on the car at this point. They were stuck on pretty good, but a good bit of wiggling and some twisting got the part off. You got to be really careful at this point because it's pretty easy to crack this stuff. Um, it's not as strong as it will be in the end yet. So just be careful as you're pulling that mold off. After that, I decided to start sanding. This is the first step of sanding uh, out of the many steps of sanding that I do across this build. I started with a DA sander, which is run off of air, but my air supply isn't very big. So you'll see me swap to an electric uh, orbital sander later on, and I'm a big fan of that sander. Definitely think you should get one if you're planning on doing any kind of work like this where you're fabricating and sculpting parts. You also see me grab my Dremel tool a lot. Um, I use the Dremel just to clean up the edges. I, I wanted to get kind of a, a good idea of what the shape was going to look like, and so I cleaned off all of the hanging strands and basically any edges that were too thin to actually be, uh, be a part. After that I brought it inside and I took a pencil and just kind of drew out the shapes that I wanted. I did a lot of measuring to make sure they were going to match on both sides. And here I got a better picture of kind of what I was going to end up with with the end. I took a lot of pictures and looked at pictures of kits that I liked and transferred the stuff I liked about them onto my fenders. I also used this time to reinforce the back of the fender. So where the joint was that I talked about earlier, where the old fender and the new fiberglass pieces meet, it's a pretty weak spot for those fenders. So I came in behind the fender and put in some more fiberglass filler just to strengthen that joint a little bit more. I followed that up with another coat of fiberglass filler and you guessed it, a lot more sanding. I lined the fenders up to match again just to make sure that all the new stuff I had made matched perfectly. I ended up having to trim just a little bit on either side, but it was really, really close and I think it's because I did a lot more measuring this time than last time. If you go watch the videos of the rear fenders, you'll see at the end I ended up with a really wonky piece because I didn't measure well enough. So I really tried to measure a lot better this time. Once those were cut, I followed them up with more sanding. And so I, so I tried to clean up all the edges. I'm always using a block. You'll see me use a block in everything, whether it's a piece of wood or if it's that uh, spray paint can. I always want to be using a surface that's not my hand. If you use your hand, you have a tendency to get kind of like finger indentions throughout this throughout the piece and a lot of times they don't show up until you paint. The fender's back on the car for this next step. Uh, I needed to apply some Bondo to fill in a little bit further and I wanted the fenders to kind of be in the shape that they were going to be uh, in when I put the Bondo on. Bondo's not super flexible and it's not as strong as the fiberglass filler and so I wanted it to be on the car when I, when I applied it. So again, I covered the entire thing with Bondo. Everything that I had put fiberglass filler on and fiberglass on, I put Bondo over. Most of it gets sanded off, so it's not like a total like Bondo bucket. A lot of the Bondo does get sanded off. It's really just there to fill in gaps and to help shape and make edges a little bit tighter and cleaner. You also see that I use more blue tape to make sure my lines were straight. After I did the first sanding, my lines had some waves in them, and so I just used that tape to make sure that they stayed straight as I was sanding. I also use this time to really make a good curve on each side of the fender. So once I was happy with the shape that I had, I pulled them back off the car and started sanding again, working on getting them ready for primer. So one of the big things you have to do is get all of the deep sand scratches out so that you can prime and the primer will fill everything and make a smooth surface. And so I worked my way up from the low grits all the way up to around 220. that it was time to prime so I cleaned it with some acetone and started spraying primer. This is my first coat of primer. I ended up doing three or four and just like the Bondo a lot of this first coat of primer is going to get sanded off. It's just there to fill in all the little scratches and stuff that I missed with the sandpaper. Okay so after it was sanded and clean and I felt like it was as smooth as it was going to get I sanded the whole thing down with 320 grit and then cleaned it really really well. I didn't want any dust between my part and my primer and so I spent a lot of time cleaning, a lot of time wiping it down and I used more acetone to make sure that all the grease and fingerprints and everything else were off of the part. 
After that, it was time to make bolt holes. Now, this is my favorite and my least favorite part of this whole project um, because it's just scary. It's the very end of the project, and you've got to cut indentions in for your screws. And it is scary, but it's actually kind of fun too. So I used my Dremel and I basically, I knew the size that they needed to be. They need to be about the size of my thumb. And so I just made some indentions that were that size. Once that was done, I sanded everything and got it ready for paint. And it was time to paint again. Now you've seen me use this gun before. It's not really great. Um, it's old and it gets clogged real easy and it's not easy to clean. But I was able to work with it one more time. And so I used it to spray the red onto the fenders. <clears throat> now somebody in one of my comments told me I need to get a gun specifically for clear coat. I found this really cheap gun at Harbor Freight, it was $15, and I decided I should try it because my gun was kind of toast and I was tired of dealing with it, and so I, fe I felt like $15 wasn't even anything to really think about. I went and got this gun. So far it's decent. Uh, it's, it's definitely not nice, but it works most of the time, and that's all that I really needed. So I sprayed some clear on the parts, got them real shiny, got them looking good, and it was about time to install them. So I went back to the fenders and I installed some rib nuts. Now what a rib nut is, is it's basically a nut that goes into your fender and clamps itself in there to give you threads in the sheet metal or fiberglass, whatever you're clamping in. I like this over the rivet because I'm able to put the fenders on and take them off. I still got a lot of work I'm gonna do on this car um, that's gonna require me to pull them off and put them back on and so this was really good for me and I just think it looks a lot cleaner. All right, so after that, it was time to put on the gasket. Now, I'm using fender welt for this. It's off of an old Ford truck. I don't recommend it at all. I mean, it's just not great. Uh, it's got a plastic tube in the middle of it, and when you cut it, the tube wants to move around, and it doesn't really mate up well. So I gotta find another solution. I thought about using some black silicone to do it, but I don't wanna do that before I need to pull the rear or front bumper off. The rear bumper's coming off next, and the front bumper still needs to be painted. So I really need to be able to remove these things. Another person in the comments said that I should use Volkswagen fender welt because it's a solid piece of rubber. So that's an option too. I may try that. If that works out, that'll be great because I would love to have something uh, that's permanent that will uh, keep that seam sealed. But as far as using fender welt, I don't recommend it. Now, I did finally get it to look decent um, and I'm going to run this for a little bit just because I had it and so I didn't want to have to deal with buying more and all that stuff. So I'm gonna use it until I figure out a better solution. The first side took me forever to get the welt put on. The second side went pretty quickly uh, and it all came together pretty easily. Alright, so that's it. I think this came out really, really awesome. I'm super stoked with how it came out. I'm really glad it's over, but I did have fun making it. I think I could do it probably a thousand times easier next time. I made a lot of mistakes this time just in the learning process, and I've got a system now that I think really works pretty well. So, probably we'll see some more body kits from uh, coming up soon. Uh, but first, I've got some more work I need to do on this car. So, I've got to paint the front bumper, I've got to do some work on the rear bumper, I've got to get a new exhaust run because I sold my old exhaust. Um, just a few things like that before I can actually drive it, but man, I'm really, really excited about driving it. Really excited. You guys are excited about it. I've had a lot of really good encouragement from y'all that helped so much just to get me to finish this project because it was such a big project and it's come in the most like busy time of my life ever. Uh, so thank you guys for being there. Thank you guys for encouraging me. If you want to see more stuff like this, feel free to subscribe. I'm going to keep posting videos like this. Um, forever I guess indefinitely I don't know uh, but I would love for you to subscribe like the video if you liked it if you want to see more wide body stuff I've got a whole playlist of uh, the rear fenders of how I made those and it's like step by step it's a little more broken down so if you have any questions you can go check that out or you can post them in the comments and I'll try to answer as many as I can uh, you guys are awesome thank you so much for the support if you want to stay up to date with what I'm doing like throughout each week 
follow me on Instagram. It's built on YouTube. That's at built on YouTube on Instagram. So you 120 or so people that do follow me right now, you've already seen these fenders. If you want to see stuff that I'm doing before I actually post it, that's the place to see it. So go follow me there uh, and check that out. Again, I appreciate all the support that you guys have given. I can't wait to keep moving on and, and doing more builds with you guys this year. It's going to be awesome. I have some great plans, some great ideas, uh, and you guys make it happen. So thank you. I'll see you soon.